You people know this as well as I do. The American people are boiling. The American people are furious. My emails are unbelievable. This federal judge yesterday, this decision, Prop 8, California, has, put, has just put people over the edge. And all of these decisions are coming one after another from all corners of the federal government. It's as if we have absolutely no say in what is going on all around us. Decisions are being made for us in lieu of us and imposed on us. We sit here, we mind our own business, we're doing everything we can to try to muddle our way through the minefield that this country has become. We're trying to live our lives, follow the rules. We have these institutions, the federal judiciary now, run by leftist nut jobs, picking us apart. And you know, people, folks, we have been predicting this is exactly what would become of the judiciary. This is insurance against election losses for the, uh, for the Democrats and for the left. Pollute the judiciary, put a bunch of liberal activists, not judges, on the court and impose your will by fiat by way of law. This is tyranny. It was easy to predict. It's tough as hell to stop it. The courts now just for the most part extensions of the Democratic Party. And the issue is who gets to make these decisions. The Constitution lays out the process, but the Constitution more and more is becoming irrelevant to the people who are running this country. You had one judge he had 7 million California voters. Judge who happens to be gay. Uh, in February of 2007, the San Francisco Chronicle ran a story. It's no big deal. It doesn't, uh, doesn't, really, uh, doesn't really matter. Judge being gay, a non-issue. During Pop 8 trial, biggest open secret in the landmark trial over same-sex marriage being heard in San Francisco is the federal judge who will decide the case. Vaughn Walker is himself gay. Many gay politicians in San Francisco and lawyers who have had dealings with Walker say that he's never taken pains to disguise or advertise his orientation. I don't care whether he's taken pains to describe or advertise his orientation. What we have here is a results-oriented liberal judicial judge, not even a judge, this is an activist, he has taken 136 or whatever it is, 138 pages to write of his own outlook rather than a fair and faithful reading of the Constitution's text. This is a personal political preference, a personal policy preference of this judge. He's not the first. That's now been codified into law. This will be appealed. He even built in his automatic stay in this knowing he was going to be appealed. It'll go to the Ninth Circus. Don't know how soon it'll get there. It'll go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Anthony Kennedy will be the target. And this judge, in his opinion, doesn't name Kennedy, but makes it plain he knows where this is going. Kennedy is the swing vote, swing vote in a 5-4 to four court. However Kennedy goes on this case is how this case is going to end up. Given that there are no further changes in the court between now and the time this case gets there. You watch all of the attention... That'll be given and focused on Justice Anthony Kennedy. We have, we have a federal judge here, one of 1,000 federal judges. The, uh, the only federal judge so far who has abused his power in the way he handled discovery in this case from day one, trying to allow video in his courtroom because he wanted to be considered a great civil libertarian jurist. He's seeking a reputation. He wanted court cameras in the courtroom. He wanted to be seen as a great civil rights crusader. The video was struck down. His decision is long. It is long because it's preposterous. He embraces every witness the plaintiffs used as experts. He rejects every contrary argument. And he even gets to the point of practically saying that marriage is an act of discrimination by homophobic heterosexuals. And that marriage has been, for generations, an act of homophobia perpetrated by heterosexuals. 
the reason gays have not been allowed to marry is because of active homophobia on the part of heterosexuals. And this has been, for the most part, codified now into law. And there's no... There, 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 this is a... There's, there's no way you can arrive at that kind of conclusion looking at the Constitution. That is a personal policy preference. Pure and simple. It's a 138-page ruling. There is no historical evidence anywhere to endorse this ruling. But the judge does it. And the Ninth Circus will likely be no better because they're populated with similar kinds of judges. The Supreme Court, with Anthony Kennedy writing the majority opinion in Lawrence versus Texas. This is a roll of the dice, folks, but with, the, with, with, with Kennedy's ruling, his majority opinion in Lawrence versus Texas, which basically threw out Texas's right to um, decide what's sodomy and what isn't, is no better. So these guys are not even judges. They're pretending to be judges, but they are political activists wearing black robes. This is a decision for the states, unless and until Congress passes a constitutional amendment, and that amendment is ratified by the states, the federal courts have absolutely no role in reversing the vote of the people of California who properly amended their own constitution. The federal courts have absolutely no role in reversing the vote of the people of California. It has basically come down to this. These totalitarian statists, Marxists, socialists, whatever you want to call them, in whatever place they inhabit, are going to advance their agenda regardless of the law, regardless of the traditions and institutions that have defined this country since its inception. For them, the result is all that matters, and the more chaos, the better. In fact, I would, I would go so far as to say that this ruling is not really even about gay marriage. I mean, that's the end result of it. But what this ruling is really all about, and the reason it's being celebrated, is that once again, a minority, and this is a political minority, is able to savor the fact that they've stuck it to the majority again. That's really what this is about. That's the end result here. It doesn't matter if it's gay rights what, or gay marriage, there's going to be another issue like this that totally violates the traditions, institutions, and the Constitution, and the law, and they're going to, and they're going to have the same kind of ruling, same kind of test case, and they're going to celebrate it because, once again, they are destroying the country. They are destroying the fabric, and that's why they're celebrating. Hard to understand, hard to get your arms around it. People born here who hate it. People born in this country who despise it. It's propelling all of this. They've either been raised, educated, or they were just DNA born with this hatred. However they have it, they've got it. And their aim is to tear it all apart. And the more you get upset, the more depressed you get, the angrier you get, the happier they are. This is what they want to create. Obama's doing a great job of it. Look at, look at the news today. Reporting on Obamaville is like covering a jailbreak, a massive jailbreak. And now the media in California is citing a poll that says that most Californians support gay marriage. And they are ignoring the outcome of the balloting on Proposition 8. So here we have a poll being reported as carrying more weight than an actual election. General Motors is making political donations with your money. General Motors has now resumed making political donations to Democrat nonprofits and Democrat entities, except they're owned by the government. So the government and the unions are using your taxpayer dollars to fund Democrat political operations.